Hello and welcome back to more Vintage Cube Draft. Um, looking at this Watery Grave. So there's a couple good card up here. Watery Grave, Hymn to Torox, Spellseeker. Skyclave Apparition is so good. I love this card. The double white makes it a bit limited, but like it's worth trying to make white work to play this card in your deck. It just answers threats, plus it's like a thing on the board. It's just insane. Like something that can kill Planeswalkers that is a creature is so good. Um, Burst Lightning is fine. Uh, Doretti's really good, but he is double colored. I think we're just going to start off. Well, what if I just start off with Skyslave Apparition? Um, I'm passing a bunch of blue, black, and red, and that would let me go into white. I think this card is one of the best cards in the pack by far. White is a strong color. Um, yeah, because if I take Water Grave, I'm passing two good blue, black. You know what? Let's try and split it here. We take the good white card. Then I could take Flooded Strand and go from there. I, I could take Splinter Twin, but I'm just not a fan of like the twin combos. They're they're okay. I think they're better than I gave them credit for previously, but they're still not my favorite. Um, Flooded Strand just helps me stay open. And the problem was in the last pack, I was taking a blue black land, but I was passing like two good blue and black cards. In this pack, if I take Flooded Strand, I'm not really passing like good blue and white cards. Like Shark Typhoon's pretty good, but it's somewhat replaceable i think it's just a solid role player and adeline she's fine but you don't need that many three drops in white um so we're just gonna take blood strand caracas is also a good consideration but i like staying open a bit here we could take thraven inspector just a good card like never feels bad to draw or play this card um sylvan library is good lingering souls wrath of god i like factory is interesting too but i'm just gonna take the thraven inspector Ooh, Fractured Identity. This is the reason to be blue-white. This card's insane. Um, we now have, like, two of the best white cards in the cube. Um, we're missing, like, Swords to Plowshares and stuff. Balance is pretty good, but not in this deck. Balance is good in other types of decks with, like, artifacts and fast mana. But this card is disgusting for the same reason that Skyclave Apparition is disgusting. It can answer really strong permanence, plus it gives you something in play. In this case, it gives you the strong permanent. So not mad about that at all. There's Mother of Runes, Solitude, Pester Might. Um, I like Mom. Turn one, Mother of Runes can just win games on her own. Solitude is a great card as well, but often comes around and I think it's slightly weaker than Mom. There's a Celestial Colonnade. One of my cards with the highest win rate. I think that just says a lot about what blue-white is and how good it is. Um, so I love that card. Treasure Cruise is good too. Armageddon, Sun Titan, but Colonnade is so good. Like... It does enter tapped, that is a cost, but then it, like it's a flyer that can help you snipe planeswalkers, which is a really important thing, similar to like creeping tar pit. Um, it's hard for planeswalkers to answer lands, and it's easy for lands to answer planeswalkers if they have evasion. So this card just does that, plus lets you cast your fractured identities. Um, here we need to decide between Gideon Blackblade, Flickerwisp, and Gideon Jura. Flickerwisp Skyclave Apparition is pretty nice. Um, Gideon Jura is better with Fractured Identity, but I think if this was Legacy Cube, I'd take Gideon Jura. I think I'm a big fan of this Gideon Blackblade, though. Yeah. Ooh, Jitae. Love me some Jitae. This is, this is the dream. There's also a Brainstorm, but come on. <laughs> come on. I'm not passing this card. Not in this deck, anyway. The downside of Blackblade versus Flickerwisp is, uh, with, like, equipment like Jitae, if you equip to Gideon, it's gonna unequip at the end of turn, so... You do need to keep that in mind, but I think the reason why I like this card more than Flickerwisp, I mean, I wish I could have both, but um, it attacks harder. Um, it gives your creatures indestructible, so you can get in for, like, more aggressive attacks, right? Like, you can three an Inspector, give the Inspector indestructible and equip GTA and attack. Um, and then you can also... He takes up very quickly and starts exiling things, and that's pretty scary from the opponent's standpoint. Like... He can be attacked, so like your opponent can kill him with damage, but if you're playing white in Vintage Cube, you should be the one attacking. So in that case, he's just like a creature that plays around Wrath Effects, which is really good. Then, wow, red looks open. I mean, I guess I'll take Elspeth. She's pretty good. I like the ability, again, to give evasion. Burst Lightning going that late is somewhat of a sign. So, I mean, I only have one blue card, so I'm just going to keep in mind that red... Could be a thing like Embrith Shieldbreaker is a pretty decent magic card. I'll take Adeline though. Again, that's a lot of white three drops, so we're looking for <laughs> like pretty much no more. If Flickerwisp comes around, I might play that instead of Adeline or in addition, I'm not sure. 
Here I'm going to take Mishra's Factory over Lingering Souls. This isn't really a Wrath of God deck. Um, is Gideon indestructible? He is indestructible. So with Gideon Elsmith, we could Wrath of God, but Mishra's Factory is just such a great addition to aggressive decks. For one mana, you get a 2-2. Uh, you can equip Jite if you have like three mana laying around. At, it blocks as a 3-3. Three, three. Like it just kind of does all the stuff you would want it to do. Aha, uh -huh. now we need to decide. Silverblade Paladin, Den of the Bugbear. I think Den of the Bugbear is quite good if red is open. But I'm just going to take the Paladin. How many white three drops that cost double white can we possibly get? That's like, <laughs> the cube is completely full of these, right? Flicker Wisp is another one we might end up with. We don't, but we do get a Thundermaw Hellkite. That's, I mean, that's definitely something. It's quite good with Silverblade Paladin. We get Armageddon, all right. I feel like I'm literally never going to see Rite of Harmony cast in this cube. I just don't know what it would be for. So in my cube, actually, that's worth pointing out, I created my own custom vintage cube, and I'm trying to get it on Magic Online, but I got uh, ghosted or whatever by Wizards. So if you know any connections to get one of my cubes on Magic Online, please reach out to me because I would love to draft it. But anyway, the cube list, there's a video going through it, um, and I have a support for like Allurin combo or like elf combo so i'm running glimpse of nature right of harmony and uh beck and call because it's really good if you go like glimpse of nature plus allurin makes all of your creatures that cost three less free and then there's the creatures like mana war that bounce themselves so you can draw your whole deck and even in my cube uh, right of harmony or whatever is a sketchy card so <laughs> i can only imagine uh here we're gonna take chromox we have so many three drops and casting them on turn two seems exciting plus like yeah it just makes hands like let's say we have like silverblade paladin and gideon turning silverblade paladin into a mana accelerant is something that i'm interested in so we're gonna take that lead splicer might come around but that's a lot of three drops and that's kind of the problem i see with the new inclusions in the cube or like cards like adeline like they're good but there's just so many of them that i would take pretty much any other card before i take them just because, like, you know, they're so replaceable. Like, if this was here, my curve just looks so much better already. Um, I love Thalia. I love Phyrexian Revoker. Thalia is actually a bit worse in this particular build, so I could see taking the Revoker because anyone can play the Revoker. Uh, only I can play Thalia, and white seemed reasonably open. That being said, some matchups Thalia just absolutely dominates, and Sacred Foundry, Elspeth... Like, this pack is good enough? Uh, I don't know. Storm the Festival is unplayable. Scavenger's not great. I'm gonna take the guaranteed. Uh, let's get let's get greedy. I'm feeling greedy today. Uh Tithe Taker. <laughs> I think this card had like my highest win rate when I did my analysis of like my cards. <laughs> because it basically I think what it comes down to is Tithe Taker is a card you really only play in like dedicated mono white decks. And that that's just like the best deck because it's so open. Um, not that this card's like a powerhouse or anything. It's just the archetypes that end up playing this are strong. I could see moving into black and getting Tide Hollow Scholar. I don't think anyone's going to pick up Tithe Taker. Uh, Condemn is not a card that you don't you want to be playing in a deck like this because you're the proactive one. You don't want to have to wait for your opponent to attack to uh, exile their creature. So we could speculate on that. I could also speculate on Temple Garden. I have a Flood Strand and this makes some fetches better. I'm actually going to do that. Uh, Giver of Runes. Oh, Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Yeah, Gideon's good. Giver should come around. Okay, I mean, we could go into green and take Elvish Mystic. That kind of helps my three drop problem a little bit. Uh, Overgrown Farmland is okay. Soulfire Grandmaster is okay. I'm actually going to spec that on this Elvish Mystic. I don't think I'm playing this red right now. But green, white, blue, like Bant is definitely that would help my curve i normally would not advocate for going into band like this but just the way that the packs have laid out my curve is so bad that like a couple mana elves might just be what i need um freezer verge thicket i mean that helps urza saga is pretty good chromox is like an awkward hit with it but it is possible i mean the upside of this card is very high Especially if I get like Mox in the next pack or Skull Clamp, uh, Soul Ring. Soul Ring actually would 
be still pretty good in this deck. I have GTA and four drop Planeswalkers. Wow, that is an unbelievably late source to Plowshares. I'll take it. I will take it. What is this? There's nine cards left, so it's like sixth or seventh pick sword. That's insane. Ooh, Intrepid Adversary is quite good. So it's a two mana, three, one lifelink on its own. Uh, or a four mana, four, two lifelink that pumps your whole team for one. That being said, Wasteland is just a messed up magic card. And I'm just going to take the Wasteland. Just being able to disrupt your opponent is very important. Um, so how's my removal? I have Swords, Revoker, Jite. Kind of Armageddon is removal, I guess. So it's between Banishing Light and Blade Splicer. The Splicer is just really good. I'm not a huge fan of the Oblivion Ring effects. Wow, was this the Thalia pack and someone took my Thalia? That's a bit wild. Um, you know, I guess we're moving into a slower, more controlling white build. I can take Elspeth. I can take Tithe Taker. Red is definitely open. Sacred Foundry would have been the pick. I can't believe someone took Thalia. I'm not too mad about it because, again, I, if Thalia is not coming around, then we have other problems. Someone must have moved into white aggro. So we need to do stuff. Uh, obligatory, beautiful, beautiful Tubby Dragon comment. <laughs> but in before I don't take him, though. Yeah, I guess someone moved into white or hate drafted Thalia when they're playing Storm or, you know, something like that. So. That's fine. Green didn't really pan out either. We have the single Elvish Mystic. So I think we're moving towards a big white deck, which is not bad. But we're missing out on the main benefit of drafting white, which is, you know, it being very open. There's our Mox to go with Urza Saga. Uh, there's Hollowed Fountain, which is a land we would really like. Walking Bliss is insane. Cathar Commando is good. But if you have Urza Saga, you just got to take the Mox. Ooh, love me some Mana Tithe. Spectral Procession's good, but Mana Tithe is the real deal. This card just wins games so easily. Um, Sensei's Top is something I would consider. It is another hit for Urza Saga. Uh, we have right now one fetch, so I'm not in love with it. Oh, someone took my Giver of Runes out of the last pack too. Yeah, that's wild. Okay. Um, Polluted Delta doesn't help us yet. I can take Figure of Destiny because this card is very good. Land Tax is alright. Karma Guide is very expensive for what it does. I think I'm just going to take Figure of Destiny. It's kind of awkward. We do have actually a lot of colorless sources, but... Ooh. Why do they do this to me? Rishidan Port and Palace Jailer in the same pack. Also, Wooded Foothills can grab Temple Garden. But I guess that, <laughs> that doesn't really help us, right? It just grabs white. Um, Port versus Palace Jailer. The Jailer is a really, really strong magic card. How many playables do I have? Uh, 22. Let's see. I mean, I have a lot of 3-drops. I also have a lot of white in my mana costs. Palace Jailer gives me removal and pressure at the same time. And it works a bit better with, like, you know, the bigger stuff like Elspeth, Gideon, Elspeth. But I love Rishidan Port. I'm just going to take the port. 4-drops are overrated. Uh, Scrubland. Karn. I mean, Karn is similar to Palace Jailer, right? He's a, a four-mana threat that affects the board. There's Cave of the Frost Dragon. I actually like Cave of the Frost Dragon. Let's just keep upgrading our, uh, our stuff. Selfless Spirit versus Disenchant. Um, what am I feeling? My curve is horrendous. I don't know if this is a main deck Disenchant deck, because I basically want something I can play in turn two. I think I like the Spirit for that reason. Uh, Windswept Heath. Archangel Avacyn. Avacyn's pretty good here. I don't have Caracas, but I have some amount of acceleration. She's good to hold up. Um, Windswept Heath does give us another shuffle, but I don't really need it. I guess it... I have Flooded Strand. My blue fixing is really bad. I think I still take Avacyn. And maybe I just end up not playing Fractured Identity. Okay, Deserted Beach helps. I mean, I'll probably just play this and that, that lets me play Fractured Identity. So we can take that. We can take Walking Ballista, Student of Warfare, or Cathar Commando. I'm kind of digging Cathar Commando. This card does it all. Um, we're not like super aggressive for students, and we don't have a ton of mana for Walking Ballista. So this is just quite perfect for us. Spectral Procession actually is another like very white intensive three drop for our collection. Karma Guide, maybe I'll side in against black decks. Who knows? Also, my non-basic lands are really showing up today. 
I don't think this is a Spectral Procession deck. I don't have like Honor of the Pure or anything. Or like a uh, Skull Clamp. But I think I need like one or two more playables. So if I do need more playables, Procession can go in. That makes us 22. And with Wasteland, Rishidan Port, and like, I think Chromox will just count as a spell. This will be like 23. Take a Savannah, I guess. And a Scrubland. And one of these. And the last pick, Brain Freeze. All right. Didn't really... That draft was weird. We definitely were getting cut off like the middle of pack two. Maybe passing Thalia was a mistake, but Thalia is pretty weird in this deck. Um, Because we have a lot of Planeswalkers. So like playing turn two Thalia, then you can't like play Gideon and Gideon on curve. I think we're counting Chromox as a spell. And then I just run 17 land plus Chromox. Makes sense to me. Because we have like Wasteland, Urza Saga, Rishidan Port, Mistress Factory. And I have to run an island here to make uh, Flood is Trend get blue. That island is going to be pretty costly. So how many white sources do I actually have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's not so bad. And then blue, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 just for one blue card and a Celestial Colonnade. I'm okay with that. See you guys around one. Oh, right, we're playing against Afterlife. This hand looks all right. Um, basically going to be like aggro swords to plowshares, Urza Saga, do some stuff. I'm on board. Um, I think I'm going to aim for a turn two Urza Saga. Just because I want to get max value out of it. I think this hand looks like it doesn't do a whole lot right now. And, oh, Cathar Commando. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll just wait on the Saga then. I really want to get the value out of it. All right, no swords here. Figure of Destiny. So I can play and level up figure, which I kind of like doing. It's a bit awkward here. Wait, I could do that at instant speed, right? Yeah, okay. No need to do it yet. Against Mono Black. You know, people like to cast Tangle Wire at times where casting Tangle Wire is very strange. All right, we'll just get down Urza Saga. So I tap four things. Armageddon's interesting. So let's go. There's a Saga, last turn. <laughs> this card plays around Tangle Wire, Tangle Wire so well. Because it's like, oh, tap down your things, oh no. And then I'm like, create a construct, create a construct. So now in my upkeep, I'm going to have to like, you know, not spend mana this turn, but... Oh, actually, it does not play around it so well. I thought this happened in your upkeep. Okay, so I tap three things. Uh, do I want to attack for two or cast Cathar Commando? I think I want to attack. Yeah, so I only get to make one uh, construct. I, that's just on me. For some reason, I thought this triggered on your upkeep. I also really want to know, like, what's going on with my opponent's hand or deck. Because, like, what mono black deck runs Tangle Wire? Okay, it's not mono black. Solemn is fine. I have no idea. So let's make a construct. And tap down the construct. And I guess at this point, just figure of destiny. So I have my mana available. Grab our Mox Jet. Play Flooded Strand. And now I have Cathar Commando activation at the ready if I need to. And or Swords to Plowshares. And I think my game plan here is pretty much just going to be flash in Cathar Commando and then cast Armageddon. Okay, Forge Master is fine. Baleful Strix is also acceptable. Okay, so they're just an artifacts deck. That makes some amount of sense. So I think we're going to go Cathar Commando, Swords to Plowshares on something. No attack with Solemn. Let's fetch. Planes. Uh, I'm more interested in Cathar Commando, I guess. I'm playing around days, basically. And I guess I want to make sure that the Forge Master dies. And this turn, what do I want to do? I can cast Armageddon. I don't know if I'm really in a winning board position. I can Fractured Identity the Baleful Strix. I think my best play here is just casting Gideon. So if I'm doing that, I don't need the white mana. Ooh, Mother of Goons is good too. But Gideon just wins board states. Gideon makes a Knight. And I'll offer a trade with Figure of Destiny. 
Even the Construct, sure. But I want Cathar Commando back in case they play like a big artifact I need to kill. Okay, they trade down. But this is the beauty of playing like blue-white, right? I have Phyrexia Revoker, Fractured Identity, and Armageddon, which can deal with a lot of stuff. Obviously, I die to like Iona or Living Death if they have that or something. The Scarab God is fine. I tap zero things. Um, so we actually have an interesting choice. I can Fractured Identity, but I am kind of weak to a Counterspell in that case. I could just Phyrexian Revoker the Scarab God. I can also Armageddon and then just take over with an army of Gideon soldiers. I feel like Armageddon plus Mother Runes has got to be good. Um, yeah, that's just got to be good. We do that, we play Mom. Gideon makes a Knight. We pass turn. Uh, actually, I'm going to Chromox away Fractured Identity because there's like no way I'm getting up to that much mana. This lets me hold up Cathar Commando if I need to. Because if I go for Fractured Identity and they counter it, I'm in really big trouble. With that sequence of plays, I can go for Armageddon and if they counter it, then I can just Phyrexian Revoker the Scarab God. Nice, okay. So I think that play was just a bit safer. Uh, they are heavily black. Karma Guide does have protection from black. Is it better than Archangel Avacyn? Is this just your graveyard? I mean, sure. Protection from black is annoying. We'll go for it. Oh, they just have a bunch of artifacts. They're not really playing a black deck. Yeah, I'll keep this hand. It's got disruption. It's got mana fixing. It's got a good curve. And this is the beauty of playing non-basic lands, right? We have Rishidan Port to stop them. Urza Saga to gain advantage. But then at the, like, at the end of the day, um, hmm, I could play a turn one Cathar Commando and start attacking. I think I like that, actually. We're going to get rid of Elspeth. And this is the beauty, right? I have Urza Saga for the late game, so I don't really need Elspeth. So we get to go Rishidan Port, Chromox, Exile Elspeth. And I can Cathar Commando on their turn. I think I'm going to do it on my turn to play around like daze and stuff. Because they can daze here, right? But if, they, if I daze on their turn, it sets them back. They have Legionnaire. That's kind of upsetting, actually. But it's okay, because now I get to go Plains Adeline. Which is a 1-4. It's going to be a 2-4. And the next turn I can go Urza Saga, Tithe Taker, Rishid Import. And then I... Don't actually have blue mana for Colonnade, but eventually I'll be able to use that as well. They had the perfect card though. Maybe that is a reason to like wait and flash in Cathar Commando, but I didn't want to like, you know, if they have counter magic, counter Cathar Commando, then disrupt this whole thing. Because even if this happens, right, I, this is activated an ability is still very good against their deck from what I've seen. Bitter Blossom, alright, so I could just Cathar Commando kill the Bitter Blossom and actually attack in the same turn. That's a good one. Uh, wow, this is kind of gross. So I think given that, we're going to play Colonnade and attack with both. This enter tapped and attacking. Yeah, so we can attack with both. And for those wondering, this is why I didn't really take the... Uh, Palace Jailer very highly. There's just so hard to find time during your turns to like tap out for a four drop, right? We like XL to Elspeth and we're doing just fine. Because Richard and Port is like, I don't know, it's something I can put in my mana base that impacts the game. I say that way too often, but that's what it is. The reason for attacking with both of these is they only get to first strike down one of them. And I think it is still just better to kill their Bitter Blossom here. And I kind of want to Fractured Identity next turn, but I guess I could just steal the Legionnaire. I could also just play a Tithe Taker. I'm just going to play Tithe Taker. I don't think my board state right now is that great. Um, just because the 3-1 is really annoying. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to kill the Porcelain Legionnaire and then Fractured Identity. The Bitter Blossom? Hmm. Drawing Mox Jet was not the best. Uh, so we could go Urza Saga... Five, so I can just Fractured Identity. Mox. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to steal the Legionnaire. Um, let me think. 
I can steal Solomon that lets me activate Colonnade. Yeah, actually I like that. One, two, three, four, five. The blue mana lets me start hitting in the air. And I have a 4-4 four, four attacking as well. So I attack like this, this, and Tithe Taker too. If they kill Tithe Taker, I get a 1-1 one, one flyer. So like my board is just growing. Adeline hits for like a ton of damage. They play Wrath maybe? No. Okay, they're just like very dead. Okay, Suspend Ancestral Vision, Pass with Mana available. Ooh, Cave of the Frost Dragon too. Look at all these non-basic lands doing stuff. So... Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. This costs five to activate, so I can't really do everything, but I don't know how they can survive if I just activate Colonnade and then swing out. They can, like, Fatal Push Adeline and then die. All right, see you guys next round. All right, round two, playing against Littlefield. Let's go first. Uh, yeah. We need white mana, but we can really stall the game until we get there with 3 Minute Spectre Wasteland Rishid import. There's a reason why we're running 18 effective mana sources here. Oh no. That's like the worst thing that could have possibly happened. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, okay, let's go Mox Jet into Rishid import. Uh, attack for one. And I guess I'm just going to crack this clue now because I can draw swords to plowshares. Yeah, I do draw a white source though, so that's something. Okay, Thalia's kind of annoying. I mean, Fraction Identity is, if they have Planeswalker is going to be good. Okay, Selfless Spirit's also pretty nice. I, I can't really Skyclave anything, so let's go Spirit. Planes holding up port, no attacks. And I can start attacking in the air, I guess they can start attacking on the ground. Or that. The thing is, I'll be able to ambush them with Archangel Avacyn very soon. It'll be kind of obvious because I won't be using port, but... Student of Warfare level up, sure. So I'm going to try and play it off like I accidentally passed through their upkeep. Because Spectral Procession, 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. I mean, I could also Spectral Procession. But I think I like just attacking here. And then passing turn. And making it look like I skipped my upkeep stop. This definitely plays into mana tithe. But the key is with the ambush to get them to tap Mother of Runes. Because they're not going to not attack here, right? Only a crazy person would do that. Okay. So now we get to them to tap down Mom. Or Swords or Path Tax out. Or, you know, mana tithe me and I cry. Um, but they get to tap down Mom and then we Skyclave Apparition the Mom. And then our removal works. Also, I think it is in their best interest to Mother Runes before blockers, because either way, they're not going to get in for damage. By doing it proactively, I can only kill one of their creatures. Absent the Avacyn. Okay. Well, I still get to kill Thalia. Perfect. So I'm drawing Avacyn this turn. So now they know about her. Um, I think we have to do this. Apparition, the Mother of Runes. And then we can attack with Selfless Spirit and Thraben Inspector, honestly. Um, and then we're going to Rishid and port down the mountain in their upkeep or the plains. They have two. They could put this up to five. So they're still quite a way away from double strike. So let's get the mountain. I don't know what that's used for, but I don't want to find out. Oof. Okay, that's, that's pretty big. I think I will trade the Selfless Spirit with Thalia if they attack like this. We have two cards in hand. Because taking seven is a pretty big punch. Uh, no, I have Archangel Avacyn. I'll take the hit here. Okay, cave is fine. Last turn. And they know what's coming. Kithian is fine. If I can get them to tap out, I can like really wipe the board with the uh, Avacyn triggers. You play Avis and then you sacrifice Selfless Spirit. Okay, they're leveling up there. So they can't quite get this all the way. So I think I'm actually just going to do the trick here. This is three damage to each, right? Other creature and each opponent. They're not going to swing with anything, I don't think. So when a non-angel creature control dies, transform this at the beginning of the next upkeep. So do this. And then if I do this... It's going to do 3 damage to everything, which is going to kill their whole board. 
Seems pretty good. Ooh, Gideon, give me a lifelink. <laughs> Get in there, good sir. Then an upkeep, we port down the red source. Yeah, this seems this seems good to me. I was in a really good magic card. And after much deliberation, our opponent concedes. So I think we're going to get rid of a wasteland and just add a planes here. Because they appear to be playing like no basics. Or non-basics, I mean. And I think I just run the rest the same. Uh, ooh, on the draw. I need to draw basically two mana sources for this hand to work. Um, let's see. I have quite a few lands in my deck. I can keep this. I'm running effectively 18 mana sources. So with each draw step, I have, let's see, there's two in my hand, so there's 16 left in my deck, so it's slightly less than 50% chance of hitting a land with my first draw step. The second draw step is exactly 50% chance. So the odds of not hitting it twice are uh, 50 squared, so like 0.25. So I have a 75% chance of hitting a land in my, by my second turn. Oh, and they just have a soul ring. Okay. <laughs> oh, but I have Phyrexian Revoker. Perfect. So we go Mistress Factory, Chrome Box. This is going to exile the Avacyn at just five mana is a lot. And we Phyrexian Revoker. And this is why I took Revoker so highly. Soul ring. Aha. <laughs> Raven Inspector. Okay. All right, Deck Land. Perfect. Um... I think I'm just going to go for a max mana efficiency here and go with Selfless Spirit into Figure of Destiny. And then any fourth land, you know, I can start doing stuff. Flicker Wisp. Okay, they can flicker their Thraben Inspector. Or they can... Oh. Clever. Um, I think I am going to end up exiling a... Planeswalker from my hand, because I need the mana. Take the one. Which one do I want, though? I feel like it's got to be I keep Gideon here. GTA is good, too. Um, so, just play GTA. I'm okay trading Figure of Destiny for Flick Wisp, I think. Because it does have flying, so let's attack with Figure of Destiny before they see what I'm doing. Okay, level this up. Some free damage, and now they're like, oh man, I should have traded because GTA is amazing here. They have their own Gideon? No! <laughs> uh, that's still beatable, but very difficult. Yeah, they make a 2-2 knight, and now I guess I... Hmm. I can play my own Gideon, but I think I need to start doing GTA stuff. Let's go with land. Equip GTA to the figure. I guess we're just going to have to trade off Figure of Destiny here. But then we get to kill their Flicker Wisp. They also have a Mistress... Wait, where did all these non-basic lands come from? Let me think about this. Because I can also play Gideon, but the problem is Gideon kind of dies to Flicker Wisp. Equip Jite to Figure of Destiny. Oh, I can... Oh, wait, I can, like, force them to make some really bad blocks here. I kind of like this better, actually. I attack with Mistress Factory. What happens here? I attack with Mistress Factory and I swing all out of Gideon. They need to block three of them, which means all of their creatures would die just to trade with Selfless Spirit and I have a GTA. That seems really good. Attack with all creatures at Gideon. So the best block, I think, is just Flicker Wisp on Selfless Spirit. But then we're trading Selfless Spirit for Flicker Wisp and Gideon plus two GTA counters. Uh, this block is better, actually, because they get to keep Gideon. And I don't need to kill the Flicker Wisp yet. But I, I like this attack more. Because now I can like threaten Figure of Destiny activation. GTA can clear the blockers. And I don't really care if Phyrexian Revoker dies now. I mean they have like a bajillion mana. So he's done his duty just denying them two mana for like three or four turns. They make a knight. Oh no that's bad. All right. Oh, their hand was so good. They can kill the figure. Yeah, I can't save that. So now I cannot gain GTA counters and play Gideon in the same turn. All right, how do I navigate this? 
I think that I can kill their Gideon. I can equip GT to Mishra's or to Phyrexian Revoker, animate Mishra's Factory, swing out at Gideon, and spend one counter to kill the Flicker Wisp. I think that's what I want to do. Equip here. Spend one counter to kill this. Then I can just force Gideon to die, I think is the best route. Because the 2 2 blockers are pretty annoying. The other Gideon is really good, but he doesn't really like work against this Gideon. I think this Gideon's stronger, even though he costs less mana. Um, if I attack Phyrexian Revoker at this Gideon. Actually, let me think about this. If I go Phyrexian Revoker at this Gideon, I can kill this Gideon. So maybe this works actually better. Well, if I attack Revoker at this Gideon, Mishra's Factory at this Gideon, they can block the Night Alley token on the Factory. They keep that Gideon, and I lose the Factory. So I think with both of these attacking this Gideon, if they block here, I shrink this. If they block here, I pump this. So either way, I get to keep my land with this attack. Yeah, that block makes sense. So this gets smaller. We get more detail counters past turn. If Gideon down ticks, he dies. Unless they, I guess they have Mishra's Factory, but I can kill that. I need them to not have stuff in hand. They still have two cards. Okay, they are down ticking. So he falls to two. They crack a clue. Drawing a land here would be particularly good, because then I can get down two creatures. And they play Thalia. Okay. And Student. So I can kill both of those with Jite. Um, I guess there's no point in activating Jite right now. I can wait. They have no cards in hand. I do draw a land. So, okay. So I can activate Mishra's Factory and Swing. I guess I could just force a trade of Factories and keep Jite on two counters, and then play Thraben Inspector? Or I can just kill Thalia Student of Warfare, play my own Gideon, and Thraben Inspector. I think that's better. Do this, play Gideon. It's wild how four mana Gideon is just so much better than five mana Gideon. Make a Knight, play Thraben Inspector. And at the moment, I don't think I need to kill their Student of Warfare. I can just do it in response to a level up. This just effectively wastes one mana from them, if that becomes relevant at all. Alright, so they're forcing my hand. I will kill this. Okay. <laughs> I'm really happy with how I played that match. I think we navigated it really well. Um, it was a good game. They played well, but I'm, I'm happy with how I played. See you guys in the finals. Oh, a little note that I just noticed. Littlefield is the trophy leader, or tied from the trophy lead, so going into the finals after taking down the trophy leader feels great. This hand also feels great. Everyone keeps, like, people still doubt Jite, and I'm like, Jite was insane that game. Ooh, turn one mom. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Right, we can go turn one mom, turn two tap land, Jite. If they mon monetize this, I'm gonna be so sad. But basically, I'm okay with that. It's a one-for-one one trade. I am up one life on the exchange. And it's equal mana, equal cards. That's just how good Mother of Runes is. Smuggler's Copter I'm less excited about. I do have mana tithe, though. So we can counter their three-drop creature. Okay. Um, That's pretty big. That's annoying how it's templated, because we would have been able to counter this. I think I'm going to tithe this. I don't want them paying mana to make this bigger. I don't know if that was correct. Um, that might have been just like way too aggressive use of mana tithe, but I can't play Gideon. I don't know, I'm very dead here. <laughs> Basically, if I let that resolve, I take four and then I take eight. And like, that's just so much damage. Yeah, I'm just very dead anyway. Everyone's winning with mono white. They figured it out. I don't know why they crewed that way, but I guess maybe that does work how I think it. It didn't work the other way. Their hand was excellent, though. Yeah, this is the problem with four drops. You just can't do it. Um, I think I just saw a bunch of things. We're gonna cut Wasteland for a Plains. Run it back, but yeah, this is, this is why I don't like taking very expensive cards in Mono White. It's just, you can get left with hands like the ones I just super lost with, where you don't do anything.
I'm going to keep this one. It doesn't have any accelerants, but we actually have the mana to cast our spells this time. We're on the play. And Cathar Commando can deal with Smuggler's Copter. Figure of Destiny, sure. So Island. We're going to flash in the Commando. I don't really want to uh, trade with Figure of Destiny. If they pass or manatide this, I'm going to be so sad. Okay. So that happens. Ooh, this is really good, actually. Adeline. We attack, make a 1-1. One, one. This is going to become... Oh, they're just going to Council of Judgment, kill Adeline. That's actually not bad. We're ahead of 1-1 one, one in the exchange. I can draw an untapped land here. And then I can start Elspething. They can make this into a 4-4. Four, four. I can also just play Silverblade Paladin. Or like Gideon Blackblade. This gains like Lifelink. I think Elspeth is the play. Make a Soldier. Hit them for four. Because now I can give this flying, give it double strike, and that's actually lethal. I'm like pretty to the swords to plowshares if they do that, though. We'll block with a soldier. Okay, they die. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> These have been some really high octane games. Right? 6-6. Six, six, silver blade. Soul bond here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Soul bond here. Okay. <laughs> We're both just comboing each other out for the win. Uh, don't really have any changes. It's just a race. Ooh, I like this hand a lot. It's interactive. We got mother runes. We can deal with their mom. It's perfect. We draw planes. So, what am I doing here? Do I want Skyclave Apparition or Gideon Blackblade? That's the real question. I think I have a bunch of removal. Gideon is also removal. This does make the manatide very obvious, though. Hmm. You know what? Let's just get rid of Manatide. He... This is hard. I don't know what to do here. I want to play Mom. And I want to Chromax for something. Do I need to hold up the mana this turn or could I wait? Because holding a Manatide this turn is like the most value. I also really want to cast a 3 drop next turn. Skyclave Apparition is very good against them. Cast this. I'm casting it. I don't know what I'm exiling yet. It's just got to be Manatide. I think if I play Mother of Wounds and Scrum Mox up, I'm giving my opponent the benefit of the doubt they'll figure it out. Skyclave Apparition has um, just a higher ceiling. They've had the swords for Mom every time. But we get to go Gideon. Don't you dare tithe this. Okay, Gideon up ticks. This is Island Permit. You don't control with mana value 4 or less. Okay, so they Relic Warder my Chrome Mox, but the damage is already done. Gideon takes a hit. Archangel Avacyn. All right. Um, I think I just need to get down the creature. So we're going to Apparition the Leon and Relic Order. And I think I need to keep both of these. Playing for the late game. This, give this one indestructible. Hit for four. I don't know. I could have seen exiling Archangel Avacyn there. But this game looks like it's going to take a little bit of time. And I, I don't like... Uh, I just don't like doing that. This is pretty nice. So I can give you... Hmm. I think I'm just going to sword the Selfless Spirit. Give this one indestructible. Planes. Swing with both. Oh, Vigilance is what I wanted. They get to gain four life from this mistake. I wanted Vigilance. That's fine. I guess they gain two. I don't know. The, I, basically, Gideon takes an extra hit for no reason. Trepid Adversary make... Oh, t Gideon takes a big extra hit for no reason. Although I wouldn't have blocked on defense anyway, so I guess this worked out better. Oh, no! The interface is so bad. I'm not the only one who's done it. That really sucks. But yeah, it says... It, like, it basically says, like, you can click Done. Ooh, Spectral Procession against Intrepid Adversary is gross. Uh, Give you... Indestructible... Attack for six. Yeah, I'm sorry, opponent. That really sucks to have that happen. Play this. Because I think the game is, like, fairly different if they manage to make that work. Oh. Oh, no. I thought it was in a good shape, but that's actually pretty backbreaking. They attack Gideon for one. I guess they let that through. I mean, they can walking blister anything. I'm going to let that through. I want to force them to walking list of the spirits. 
Oh, that's so good. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. Okay. Um, so, how do I play this? I think the play here is to just Gideon down tick on Walking Ballista right now. Then... No, that doesn't actually work because they're just going to shoot the spirits anyway. I think I want to give a spirit indestructible. Or give Skyclave Apparition indestructible because that gives him a 2-2. Let's do that. Okay, that takes one. So we're basically just going to eat their walking ballista with this. And we're going to lose our spirits, but then we're going to flip Archangel Avacyn, so... Okay, <laughs> they're just done. I understand that. That was a very clean trophy. Is this person anywhere up there? No. We are taking down the trophy leaders. Um, I just, the, the reason I'm not on the trophy board, people always ask this, I just don't play enough. I, like, if you want to be a trophy leader, like, I can trophy 80% of my drafts or whatever. Not 80, it's like 60% of my drafts end up in a trophy. Um... But, like, if I only draft twice a day, there's no way I'm going to get eight trophies. Like, I think I've done six drafts, and I've trophied three of them. Um, there's just no way that I can have eight trophies without drafting eight times. This deck was sweet. Really happy with how I played. See you guys next time. If you made it this far into the video, you're clearly enjoying the content. So if you want to help support me being able to make more content, there's two ways to do it. The first is free and very easy, just following me on Instagram. Uh, you get, you know, to see cool stuff like this cat made out of trees or this dog that's an island. Um, some very interesting or trippy videos like this one, which I, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Um, the other one is just going to my store. Um, I sell art like the ones I've shown. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff there. You can shop the collections and see things like this. I'm selling t-shirts uh, and I would really appreciate it. Thank you.